Minnie was quietly preparing a fish for a meal in her kitchen, working carefully on the counter. As she worked, she suddenly lost her grip on the knife when she noticed something unexpected inside the fish. It appeared shiny, and as soon as she touched it, she screamed. Startled by the movement, Joel and his wife Minnie lived closely with nature, growing their own fruits and vegetables in a lush garden. They frequently fished in a nearby lake, providing much of their food from the land. This lifestyle, which included teaching their children practical skills, was a family favorite. On this particular day, the couple caught a fish, much like they had done many times before. However, this time the outcome would be different. What they caught was a mudfish, also known as a bowfin, a bony fish not commonly appreciated, but if cooked well, it can be quite delicious. Joel and Minnie were experts at preparing the fish, often turning it into a tasty meal. They planned to make fish cakes with baked potatoes, so Minnie began cleaning the fish in the sink as usual. After washing the fish, she brought it to the kitchen counter, ready for her least favorite task, removing the head and gutting it. But just as she was about to cut into the fish's belly, she noticed a strange lump in its middle. Curious, Minnie carefully cut into the fish and pulled out an unexpected find, a gold necklace with an anchor-shaped pendant. This discovery took her by surprise, and she was astounded to find it inside the fish, but her astonishment didn't end there, as she continued cleaning the fish, she reached the area where the lump had been, and something frightening happened, when she touched the spot, it moved, causing her to jump back and scream, Joel rushed to the kitchen to check on his wife, who was still in shock, when he got closer, he saw the lump of flesh curling up, giving the appearance of life despite the fish being dead and headless, puzzled by this, Minnie decided to search the internet for answers before trying to touch the fish again. Meanwhile, Joel began filming the fish's unusual movement. After some online research, many discovered that fish can continue to move even after death due to their cells still being able to respond to stimuli. Salt, a common preservative, might also play a role in this reaction. With this information, many sighed with relief and shared a chuckle. As the mystery of the fish's movement was solved, however, they were still left. Wondering about the strange findings within the fish, Joel noticed the necklace on the counter and inquired about it, surprised when Minnie described how she had found it. This piqued his interest, so Minnie continued removing the fish's entrails. As she did so, a few small shiny balls emerged from the fish's stomach. Is that a bead? Minnie asked. When they examined them closer, Joel was amazed. They were pearls. Wow, are you sure? Minnie asked, astonished. Joel tested one of the pearls with his teeth and confirmed they were indeed real pearls. Since mudfish like bowfin are known to eat a variety of things, the fish likely consumed oysters and mussels. At the time, the couple was unaware of the pearl's potential value, so their discovery was a pleasant surprise. Joel filmed videos of their findings and posted one online. The unusual occurrence caught people's attention, as it's not every day a fish contains hidden treasures. Joel and Minnie aimed to find the necklace's owner, asking if Anyone recognized it, but found no leads. Weeks later, Minnie remembered that they had caught multiple fish that day. With five sitting in the freezer, she decided to clean them, starting with the first fish, which revealed nothing unusual. The same was true for the next three fish. However, the last fish held a surprise. As Minnie cleaned the fifth fish, her knife struck something solid. Upon opening the fish, she discovered a gold ring, based on its size. The ring seemed to belong to a man. Cleaning it revealed an engraving of two names, Jimmy and Meline, along with a date. It was evident it was a wedding ring, providing valuable clues for tracking down the owner. Joel and Minnie searched for the names and date, which proved challenging. Eventually, Joel exclaimed in excitement, James and Madeline Jeffords. They conducted some sleuthing on social media but found no mentions of a lost wedding ring. As it was likely misplaced long ago, Minnie eventually decided to reach out to Meline via a message, introducing herself and inquiring if she or her husband had lost a wedding ring, Minnie eagerly awaited a response but received none. Finally, that night, as she and Joel lay in bed, she got a reply. Meline confirmed that they had indeed lost a wedding ring years ago. Joel was asleep when Minnie woke in to share the news. They decided to meet with the couple. Before the meeting, they explained that they had found the ring in the stomach of a fish caught in the nearby lake, too. Ensure they had the right couple, they asked Meline about the other name engraved on the ring, 
It turned out that her husband James was also known as Jimmy, so Minnie and Joel had successfully located the real owners. As they prepared to meet the couple in person, Minnie was unaware that the best part of the story was still to come. As Minnie and Joel arrived at the couple's home, Minnie's eyes welled up with tears. On the front lawn stood an elderly couple holding hands, after greeting one. Another, James and Meline shared their story, many years ago, while walking along the pier, Meline had dropped her small jewelry bag from her purse, the bag was swept away by the waves, and they were unable to retrieve it, the elderly couple showed Minnie and Joel some photos, and while viewing them, Minnie noticed something remarkable, Meline was wearing the gold necklace with the anchor-shaped pendant in one of the pictures, it was a moment of destiny, and the elderly couple was overjoyed, the couple expressed their gratitude to Minnie and Joel, wanting to do something special for them in return, Meline offered Minnie the necklace as a token of appreciation, and Minnie accepted, as Minnie and Joel prepared to return home, the elderly couple couldn't stop smiling, feeling it had been a wonderful day for everyone, Minnie was pleased they never gave up on finding the rightful owners of the ring, losing an item with sentimental value is always heartbreaking, so she and Joel were glad to return something meaningful to the couple, what did you think of today's story, do you believe in fate, let us know in the comments, next, there is another story, let's continue to see it, a large grey patch was discovered off the shores of the coal oil point preserve in Santa Barbara, Southern California, this mysterious 7 foot, 600 pound creature puzzled many until social media helped bring it to the attention of a marine biologist, revealing its identity in a way that surprised everyone, when a Seven-foot-long object washes up on the beach, it's hard to ignore, and even more puzzling when no one can identify it. This was the situation faced by Coal Oil Point Reserve employees in 2019. Although the creature looked somewhat familiar, closer examination only raised more questions. Initially, experts at the preserve believed the sea creature was a sunfish, one of the largest fish on Earth with some weighing nearly 2,000 pounds. However, there was something about it that didn't quite fit the typical sunfish description, the coal oil point preserve is protected by the University of California, Santa Barbara, and is considered one of the best examples of a coastal environment, located near the Pacific Ocean, the preserve is home to a variety of marine life, but nothing quite as large as this stranded animal, the intern who first spotted the creature described it as a large gray patch, conservation specialist Jessica Nielsen mentioned in a press release from the university that she was initially surprised by the intern's discovery, as nothing like it had ever been found on the reserve shores. Unlike most creatures that wash up on the beach, such as jellyfish, this organism had unique characteristics that puzzled Nielsen. In an interview, she called it the most remarkable organism she had seen on the beach in her four years at the reserve. Photos of the unusual creature were posted on the reserve's Facebook page to gather opinions on its identity. This caught the attention of evolutionary biologist Thomas Turner, who was equally stumped by the creature but traveled to California to see it firsthand. Turner described the creature as the most unusual fish he had ever seen, noting its lack of a tail and fused teeth, resulting in a large round mouth. The creature's size, 7 feet long and weighing 600 pounds, led some researchers at the Coal Oil Point Preserve to believe it was a regular sunfish. Photos of the creature were also posted to iNaturalist, a conservationist social media platform, where the general consensus agreed it was a sunfish. However, when fish expert Ralph Foster from the South Australian Museum got involved, doubts about the initial conclusion arose, upon examining the creature, Foster determined it wasn't an ordinary sunfish and, in fact, might be an undocumented species, this new perspective stirred excitement, and Foster knew someone who might provide answers, marine biologist Moran Yard, Ralph contacted Moran, providing her with details on the creature's discovery and available photos in hopes of gaining more insight, however, Moran was not impressed by the photos and could not reach any conclusions about the creature's identity, Marian didn't give up on trying to identify the creature, she just needed a better look at it, the initial photos weren't clear enough, so she hesitated to base her identification solely on them, however, she was eager to help Foster determine the nature of the creature, so they contacted Jessica and Thomas to obtain higher quality images, Jessica and Thomas were more than willing to return to the beach to take better pictures, but upon arrival, they found that the creature had been washed away by the tide, undeterred, they continued to monitor the beach, 
Hoping the creature would reappear, they were right, the giant gray patch reappeared a short distance from its original location, allowing them to capture high-definition photos, these new images had the potential to provide Moran and Ralph with the answers they needed, while taking the photos, Jessica and Thomas took a closer look at the mysterious creature and noticed a few unique characteristics they hadn't seen before, these observations helped confirm that the creature was not a sunfish, increasing their excitement about sharing the photos with Moran and Ralph, Jessica later shared that taking the photos and collecting samples was a thrilling experience, as they understood that their work could lead to an extraordinary discovery, once Moran received the new batch of photos, the true nature of the fish became clear, she told CNN that when she realized what they were dealing with, she was taken aback. After examining the second set of photos, Marianne and Ralph concluded that it wasn't a common sunfish, it was a hooded sunfish. Interestingly, Marianne had discovered this species in 2017 and named it Hoodwinker. Given the multitude of fish species, it was remarkable that the scientists managed to identify the creature quickly after receiving clearer images. The common ocean sunfish was discovered in 1758, but at the time, scientists were only aware of that one species, without the advanced technology available today, they couldn't explore the depths of the ocean as thoroughly, so they were unaware of the different varieties of sunfish as time passed and technology evolved, a new type of sunfish was spotted in the southern hemisphere, including off the coasts of Australia, New Zealand, and South Africa. Marin Yard chose to focus on this mysterious species, which had gone unnoticed for so long due to its Similarity to the common sunfish, in an interview with CNN, Marin explained that the hoodwinker sunfish was initially difficult to differentiate from a common sunfish. Initially, everyone believed the stranded creature was a sunfish because its appearance closely resembled one. This caused confusion as sunfish species can be deceiving at first glance. The hoodwinker sunfish, in particular, has managed to remain virtually unnoticed, fooling everyone who initially saw the photos, Marin didn't. Even consider the possibility of it being a hoodwinker sunfish because they had never been observed near the United States before. In fact, California is now the northernmost point where a hoodwinker sunfish has been found, making its presence there one of the most intriguing aspects of the discovery. Typically, these fish inhabit waters in the southern hemisphere, but sunfish are known to drift. The sighting of the hoodwinker sunfish in California was a groundbreaking experience for the scientific community, it marked the first documented instance of the species in the Americas and only the second in the Northern Hemisphere. There's still a lot to learn about the hoodwinker sunfish, given it was only first identified in 2017. It's exciting to think about what other findings may emerge as researchers study this elusive species further. What did you think of today's story? Share your thoughts in the comments. It's fascinating how a seemingly ordinary event, such as a stranded fish, can lead to significant discoveries, this story is a reminder that you never know what the day may bring.